Okay, well before we get started on the main video, I need to explain something. I had the video all finished, uploaded, ready to go, wasn't live yet. But then I came across some more information. And I thought, well this information is too good to leave out. So let me take you to the RV and show you what I found. Then I'm going to stitch it together and re-upload re everything. So let's head to the RV. Okay, back to the RV. I've been here been doing some air conditioning work as you can see. And while I was digging around, I happened to look up here and I seen this tag. I guess I've seen this tag before, never paid it, paid it no mind. Got to looking at it closer, I thought, well, what do all those numbers mean? Well, well, that's probably something pretty interesting to know. So I got to digging all over the internet. I couldn't find anything about them. Couldn't decipher them in any way. So I reached out to John at Brazzles RV and sent him a picture of this. And he said, yeah, I mean, he knows exactly why. I guess they're called RPO codes. But there's nowhere on the internet where us owners can have access to the information him being a dealer i guess he has access to this information he put in my vin number and then printed me out a complete list of what all these codes mean so that's what i got and that's what i'm going to share with you and i'm going to put all these codes and their meaning below this video so that's what i wanted to point out so let's head back into the house and i will show you what they mean okay so we're back into the house so this is what john sent me this pdf file so it takes my VIN number and breaks it all down. You see it's order number, bill code, of course it went to Winnebago Industries. Um, that's interesting, delayed mileage, 241. Don't, don't, don't know what that means. Uh, bill date, all this interesting information. I thought that was pretty cool. But even more cooler is this stuff down here, all these codes. So if you've got these codes on your RV, you can kind of decipher it out. So my rear axle ratio is 5.86. All this different information. What else was interesting? You know, front axle weight. There was something else that caught my eye. All oh, the fact that you know it, it left with, with what tires it left with. Tire size it tells us the tire brand Michelin, 80 mile per hour speed limiter. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool information. But if you can look at your RV and pull up any of these codes here. And, you know, and that's why I, I took it did a copy and I put all this information below this video. So after you watch the video, just scroll below it, you'll see everything. So just wanted to point that out to you. It might be kind of interesting for you to check up and you can kind of figure out some of the codes on your RV. Maybe someday we'll get a complete list, but um, I asked John about that. I, I don't think he said he, he ever found a complete list listed anywhere. It was just the only way he pulls up the list is by individual VIN number. So, but I guess that's the most common code, common codes, at least for W24, W22 and stuff may have completely different codes, not for sure, but you can uh, cipher those out and let me know. All right, all right, back to the uh, original video. Chassis, chassis, what is your chassis? Well, if you're like me, when you first got your used motorhome, you didn't know what you had. When we first got this Winnebago, 11 years ago, all I knew was I had a Winnebago RV. I assumed it was a Winnebago chassis. I didn't realize it was made by somebody else. So I started doing research and, and reading, and it turns out I had a workhorse chassis. But then again, I didn't know, well, which version of workhorse did I have? Because I got to reading more, and I saw there's P32s, there's W22s, there's W24s, and I had to figure out, well, what do I have? So I had to track down the VIN number and decipher it. But then that's another thing because the VIN number can actually be in like six different locations. So I'm going to show you all those six locations so you can track down your VIN number and then we can decode it. Now Winnebago, there's one simple place. Usually it's in a closet. So let's check. Let's check there. And yes, for us right there is the VIN number. Where is it at? There it is. Jesse VIN. And then, then Winnebago, the serial number, that's Winnebago's number. For the for the body i guess and the chassis is the workhorse number so that's one location we got that track down let's see if we can find the other ones so location number two at least for our rv is right here in the driver's side door and there it is again there's our vin number there's the model number and there's the winnebago serial number so that's location number two i'm going to show you location number three Okay, I'm working in the dark. We storm came through. We got no power. So let me turn on the, some light. Here we go. Now, location three is right here on top of the left-hand 
radiator support. So we get in right there. There's another location for your VIN number. In case you was wondering. Alright, now there's still three more to go. Now according to the book, our VIN number is supposed to be also in three more locations. So, but for me, I had no luck finding them. Because you simply see right here, it says here, the rear right hand cylinder head, we should have a VIN number. But I've even sanded on it, and I, I do not have any VIN number on the back of the cylinder head. It's supposed to be right there. Maybe they did that on later models, but maybe in 2004, 2005, they chose not to. Another location is supposed to be on the top of the transmission. You can see, see it's got the big number there. You see how this rib is made, how it rib, rib comes up? The vent is supposed to be right there. So let's go on here. And once again, you can see, where we get, come on, get my camera in the right spot. Okay, see there's that big, yeah, I can't really see. Oh yeah, there it is, it's gotta get way back here. Okay, so there's that big number, number seven, right past that rib. So I've been scratching around. The VIN number should be right in there. But it is not there for me. Tight squeeze under there. But that's where it is supposed to be. It may be on yours. That's a better view out there. Upside down, but it's a better view. It's supposed to be right, right in this area. Maybe yours will be, but mine was not. So there's one more spot. We gotta go under the chassis to find it. Okay, under the RV we go. Now, according to the paperwork here, it tells you plain as day. It's if there's the, the frame support, frame rail behind the transmission, right hand side. You think, okay, that's easy enough. Problem is, it's stamped on the top of the frame rail. If you go under here with me, okay, there's a transmission, okay, that's the frame rail they're talking about, and then the picture, they're showing the top of this right here, on the top side, and as you can see, Winnebago has built an RV on top of that part, so there's no way to access the VIN number that's supposedly stamped on the other side of that, so you're in motor home. Or your chassis may vary. Maybe you can find yours, but I cut no mine. So that's our six locations, six options anyway. I got three out of six so far. Okay, now let's try to decode this VIN number of yours. Because remember, if you got a 1GB, then you don't do not have a workhorse chassis. You got a Chevrolet motorhome chassis. But if you start it with a 5B4, yay, you got a workhorse chassis. All right, so these numbers I wrote on top, this is our workhorse chassis number. So we'll de decipher these things, figure out what we got. So like I said before, 5B4, that just tells us it's a workhorse chassis. All right, fourth dig digit location, what's it going to tell us? That comes in here, fourth digit, mine's an M. M, that tells me, I guess, my weight rating. We're on between 19,500 to 26,000 pounds. I know I'm doing W24, so I guess 24,000 pounds. All right, so next, what's our next line over we got is our five, fifth digit over. And I'm a P, so come down here. So fifth digit over, this just means forward controls. You know, we're, we know we're not a diesel pusher, so I guess there's only two options for that, P or R. All right, so that's fifth. And here's the most important one, our sixth digit location. This is the one you want to focus on. So if you got an A, you come down here, see the six series, you come down here to A, and you just won the lottery because that means you got a W24 chassis. Now the other two most popular chassis would be the P32 and the W22. The W22, then instead of having an A up here, if you got a W22, you're going to have a number six. Which W22 is very similar to the uh, W24. And I made a video showing the differences on the two. Um, now if you have a 5, then that's a P32. That's you're going to be your smaller RVs. Even you'll find like some bread trucks and stuff. 
will be built on the P32 chassis. Quite, quite a bit different uh, lighter motorhome than the W series. So that's got that part figured out. Um, what else we got going over here to the seventh digit? What's that tell us? All right, that's the body description. Seven, that just tells us we're motor on. So commercial vehicles, shuttle buses, other things. All right, that's our seventh. Eighth position, come on down. Engine type, all right, yeah, we got the good 8.1 Vortec L18 V8 Monster Power. All right, that's number eight. What's nine going to tell us? Number nine, we come down here. Well, it's just a check digit. Don't tell us anything, does it? Oh, can, there's just no options for that. Okay, the tenth digit. All right, so that's the year it was built. So ours comes in at 2005. All right, then we get to the eleventh digit. I've got a number three that tells me our chassis was born in Union City, Indiana. Is it number three? If you have a number four, you, it was put in Hagerstown, Indiana. Just wonder if any of those plants are still running these days. It's hard to tell. And then the rest are just your, that's the, our true serial number. The, the last dit, six, what, six digits there. All right, so I'm going to try to position this phone here so you can get a screenshot so you can decipher yours. And you, maybe you could print it out. So if I hold this phone just like this, you could uh, get a screenshot and then print it out. That may not be close enough. Let's get in closer here. So there's all the details. Come on down here, get some more details. There's probably some PDFs somewhere online, possibly, you could print out. There you go. Got some good stuff there. So hopefully that'll help you out, and so now you know exactly what chassis you have. You don't have to guess when you go looking up parts and stuff. You know exactly the machine you got. Anyhow, thank you for watching. Have a blessed day. See you later. Bye-bye.